Oh, the last moments of March 31st, 1999, fading away, and we're speeding to uh, the year 2000. Bobby Porcelli, it's uh, good to get acquainted with you and hear you uh, with that wonderful tone and sweet, warm sound of your alto saxophone and that flute soaring through the air. You, um, you bring a vast range of experience to this business. Well, um, I, I guess as you know, as many years I've been playing, and uh, I hope I uh, accumulate a little experience. <laughs> but uh, always uh, trying to get better and uh, trying to keep from getting worse. Sometimes it seems, but uh, I keep trying, and uh, it's great to be playing with this band. Well, this certainly is a, a remarkable book, and it, it sort of fuses a lot of things, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, and the main thing is that that um, we have this whole bunch of, of tunes written by the masters, but then we have things written by contemporary guys, also guys who are writing now. And I've written a few, and Ronnie Matthews, when he was in the band, he wrote a few. And the current pianist, Gary Gallen, wrote one. And uh, it's, it's a pretty good mixture. And um, always bearing in mind what the essence of jazz is. And uh, I think we do that pre pretty well. People seem to always comment on that. In the course of time, you've been in Afro-Cuban bands and yeah. dance bands and jazz bands and, well, the experience is broad. Uh, where did it really begin? What turned you on to, 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 to jazz? Um, just listening at home to records and radio. And, li and then I started listening to you on the radio when I was in high school, way back there in the 50s. I used to listen, we talked about it, I, how I used to listen to this program. Every night on AM radio, real soft, while I was going to sleep, so I wouldn't wake anyone else. And uh, when you came in last night and told me that you had been one of the people working on that program, I couldn't believe it. And I had just been thinking about that program yesterday because it's very fond memories for me. And it started out like in the house. My parents were musicians, and there was always uh, good music, uh, whether it was Benny Goodman or Glenn Miller or Dixieland or swing jazz. Oh, I was always I always liked it. And uh, I learned how to play the saxophone and clarinet from my father, a little piano from my mother. And um, it just happened uh, naturally. And uh, just, just uh, I, I thought I was going to be an engineer. I was going to school for engineering. But it, sooner or later, the music uh, just welled up in me or whatever and took over. And I realized that's what I wanted to do. And uh, that's it. I, and, and I just uh, then I met the right people and who introduced me to the to the uh, different players and and the Latin thing I just fell into that it, being in New York it's 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 not unusual and but I got really into it very heavily played with all the great bands I still play with Tito Puente and uh, they they say I'm the only um, person or at least yeah I don't know if it was the only horn player or the only person who's played with the big three in their prime during this during 1960s uh, Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez and Machito and I played steadily steady at all three and there's no I know I'm the only sax player around who has done that and uh, well that's it <laughs> well I wanted just briefly you know, uh, you know just a comment on each uh, let's start with uh, Machito well playing with Machito was the most beautiful experience when first of all as I said I played with all those three the key is when they were in their prime because they all went on, uh, Machito went on, I, I was with Machito in the mid-60s. He still had all of, most of the original guys there, older guys, and who created that sound. And when I sat into that, in the middle of that band, I had played with the Tito Rodriguez already, and which was a wonderful band. But when I sat in, Mach in the middle of Machito's band, and we played the first notes, and I heard the sound that was coming out all around me, I, I said to myself, this, is, this must be what it's like to sit in Duke Ellington's band. Or uh, or Basie, but especially Duke, I guess, and all these great guys who uh, with these sounds, the sax players, and all of them. It was just fantastic. It's in another on another level altogether in Latin music. It's just wonderful. And uh, of course, Tito Puente is a different dynamic altogether. Yeah, very fiery and uh, not as subtle as as uh, and not as not as clean and precise as Tito Rodriguez. Not as subtle and beautiful let's say as uh machito but very fiery and um percussive uh, sometimes it's you feel like the whole horn section is a is a drum or something you know and, but it's but very very good and he and tito 
he may be uh, in some respects the most important person in my life musically because I've worked with him for so many years and he's given me so many opportunities and uh, uh, in, in a way he is you know even though my love is playing jazz still when I look at my career I spend more time working for him and I still do and he's been very important to me and uh, someday I'm going to tell him that too you know in fact uh, recently I've been thinking about finally cutting the uh, the string with him and, and leaving completely because I feel like it's time but I feel I have to really tell him what I you know how much I appreciate him what he's done for me and everything and I, that's how I feel about him he really has been maybe the most important person in all things considered Bobby Puccelli it's great of you to take time after the ball <laughs> with the spent adrenaline at all oh, yeah. in the heat of the night uh, yeah. but before uh, but before we sign off um, just a thought. Here it is, uh, 1999, and we're headed down to the year 2000. You've been working in this art form for a long time, seeing it at its mo most mature level, and I suppose immature level, but yeah. in the range of it. How do you see uh, uh, jazz's future as we round the millennium, any way, shape, or form? Well, first of all, let me say that I heard part of the interview you were doing with Lonis, and uh, I was there for the last part of that golden age he was talking about. I used to go down to Birdland, the Five Spot, these clubs, Cafe Bohemia, and see all when they were great, nothing but great players. Every night you could have your choice of who to listen to, and uh, I've seen what's happened since then, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm as optimistic as Lonis is, but uh, I hope he's right. Um, I just see... Uh, I don't think there's, it's, it's that there's not as many talented musicians around as there used to be, but the, the, the scene, the way it's set up now, I don't see a chance for them to get into the music the way they did in those days. And now things are better economically and guys are more concerned with uh, making the proper money and, and being, um, having publishing company and, and doing concerts and having a manager. But yet those, those guys who you could say maybe were exploited in those days, they, uh, they just played and played and played and, and uh, it was a different attitude. I, I don't know. I hope that things will come around somehow to that kind of a feeling again. But I'm not as uh, optimistic. I don't know. I hate this close on that note. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, straightforward and analytical thinking on the subject, and I appreciate very much your observations from your veteran point of view. Bobby Puccelli, pleasure to meet you. Thanks for taking time. Thank you very much. Good to be here.